Getting my act together here, guys. I practiced like four times before this to make sure I knew what I was doing, and um, so much for practice. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Yes? Okay, thanks, Carrie. So good evening. Um, first of all, I want to tell you guys there are lots of great things happening. Many of you already know about them because I've seen your Facebook pages. Um, Dairy-free shakes, super exciting because I'm a dairy-free girl, so I love the uh, fact that we now have strawberry because uh, our strawberry tastes so real. Um, secondly, celebration is in just a couple of weeks, so I'm very excited to see a lot of you there um, for celebration and to uh, probably do some fun dinners and hear a lot about what the company's um, doing in the future. So I hope you're already in the midst of creating a super awesome best week ever. Um, welcome to our Tuesday night leadership call. Um, I'm excited and I'm very humbled um, to be here tonight. So Carrie reached out to me and said, hey girl, what's your topic? And I didn't know I was actually speaking because um, I lost my calendar, but I, I quickly got my act together and I had all sorts of thoughts. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to really wow them. And, and I came up with all these super like exotic topics. And then I finally just thought, you know what, why don't you share what you're working on in your own life right now? Um, and so this is a topic that I am currently working on. And frankly, I'll probably be working on it for the rest of my life. Um, the topic is mindset and creating and having greatness, not only within yourself, but for creating greatness for those that are around you. So first of all, who am I? Um, I am not Hillary Courtney, as it says. Uh, my name is Robin Spooner. And I um, am a daughter of the king, number one. I am the mom of three incredible kids who frankly put the belly fire in me every day to make me be a better mom and better person. Um, and I'm so grateful for the lessons my three kids have given me. Um, I'm a wife to Bill who has put up with me um, and we've had a great life. Um, now we just celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary. Um, I'm a farm manager up in Iowa. And I am a lawyer who left the 12 hour a day work schedule and filling out timesheets um, to get out of that rat race. I am psychologically unemployable since about the age of 10. And um, I'm an acts of service addict. And finally, I am a recovering overachiever. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about who I am. So for the past few days, I have literally been um, praying over each of you that I would give you the message that you needed to hear because the people who are on here tonight, it's not an accident. Um, as Lenny says, sometimes we need the meeting and sometimes the meeting needs us. So something in this, in this talk tonight, I hope gives you a golden nugget um, and blesses you. So um, I should also mention that I am a red personality. So those of you who know the color chart um, know what that means. That means I have an outline over here so that I don't miss any of the things that I wanna share with you tonight. Um, so I'm not a public speaker, but I do, um, I have a little set of uh, outline over here so I can cover everything. So why did you all dial in tonight? Um, nothing good on television. Did somebody um, guilt you? Um, maybe you were curious what greatness actually meant. Um, but like I said earlier, we were all supposed to be here, so let's get started. Um, so if you take nothing away from tonight, I just, I love, um, I love just breathing life into people. And so I want you to know that at your core, you are extraordinary. You have a message that no one else can give. And that's so important because um, there's 12 participants on here right now. We all are gonna attract different people. We're all gonna give messages in a different way, but we're gonna attract people based on who we are. So we have a unique message. And I want us to remember that even though there are times, and I've done this myself, but it seems like others are, you know, really killing it um, in social media or they're killing it with enrollments and you, you're comparing yourself. And I just don't, I just want to remind you not to do that because I'm going to attract someone completely different than say Julia is and it's all, all good. Um, so you have a beautiful story to share and to tell with other people. And frankly, there are people that are out there waiting and praying. I talked to someone today and she was like, I can't believe 
that I'm hearing this today. This is exactly what I needed to hear. And I just smiled because I knew that that's exactly the way it was supposed to be. Um, so when we all make these contributions um, and, and support each other, we actually create a team and a community that's awesome. So I love seeing all the new people every week. I have the opportunity to share the list of all the new people and see who's enrolling. By the way, I see Chris Berline on here, um, top enroller for last month on our team. Good job. Um, and I truly believe that we have some of the best and the most humble and dedicated people in the industry. So if we're constantly working on being better versions of ourselves, we're going to attract more amazing people. So Albert Einstein, uh, way back when, said there are only two ways to live your life. One is though nothing is a miracle, and the other is though everything is a miracle. And I love the visual of myself waking up every morning just embracing the day and being super excited to know what miracles are gonna come my way. So let me share a little bit about what my life used to look like um, and see if any of you all can relate to it. Okay, number one, I had lists for everything. These lists were long, they were full of impossible tasks that couldn't actually get done, and there was no priority to, priority to them. So it might be 80 things on the list, and at the end of the day, I would focus on everything I didn't get done. And so I was really living my life with lack, with all of these lists. My daily self-talk was also um, related to that because what did I focus on? I focused on what I didn't get done and what didn't go right. Even if things went really well that day, I was focused again on lack. Um, back in the day, I'd hit the snooze button multiple times every single morning because I frequently pulled all-nighters. I'll talk about that later. And then I wake up panicked because I was rushed and I would literally hit the ground running with my mind going 100 miles an hour. Breakfast, forget it, hardly ever happened uh, because I was already late, no time. So I was stressed out, overwhelmed, and not present. But as I got older, I realized that the daily rituals that I had put into place were not supporting me, not serving me well. And I had goals, but I really didn't have any rituals that supported those goals, and that, that's just so important. So I wasn't serving myself, and I wasn't really serving those around me very well. So Tony Robbins said that to make profound changes in your life, you either need inspiration or desperation, and that's really where I was. My fast pace, stay up all night. If you want something done right, what do you do? Do it yourself. Um, all those things were not working for me, and it was really creating um, a desperate need for me to change. So I'm sure there are people on here that can relate to that. So honestly, it wasn't until I joined Isogenics that I really thought much about my daily rituals and how they impacted my day. I just jumped on the wheel every day, did my thing, came home. But, but don't get me wrong, I had healthy kids, I had a great husband, I, I thought I was happy, I just didn't have those rituals in place. And I'd heard of morning rituals, but frankly, I poo-pooed them because those people were literally wasting an hour to two hours of their time every day that I knew they could get more stuff done off that list of theirs. Um, and so I poo-pooed those, those morning rituals that others had. And so for years, I would pull all-nighters to, to tackle my list. I'd wake up exhausted, and frankly, I was not productive even the next day. It was a vicious cycle, but it was really all that I knew, unfortunately. Um, so as I look around, again, I would see other people doing their best life, and that's what really I noticed in Isogenics. I would see all these people up there, and they'd talk about their daily routines, and I thought, what the heck? I have nothing to lose. This clearly is not working for me. I am a mess, basically. Um, so I thought, why not? Um, you know, they say things are hard until they're easy. Uh, yes, they were. So I thought I would ask every single person what their daily routine was and their um, daily ritual. And so you can imagine by that point, I had a list about this long of everybody's perfect ritual, which again, didn't work for me and I was right back in the same situation. So it's taking a few years to come up with a morning schedule that works for me. Um, and I know there are a lot of you on this phone call tonight that have incredible rituals, and I hope you will post those, that your little tidbits, your nuggets, because I am not claiming that I know it all, but I am telling you what I have found that works for me. Um, so if you don't have a morning ritual, one thing you can do is keep track of what your day looks like for the next two weeks, 
and then you're gonna find holes. It's kind of like when we tell people to keep a food log and then you start going through it and you're like, oh, well, there's a problem, there's a problem. You can do the same thing with your daily schedule. So what I've found is that when I follow my schedule, I am in the right mindset and then I attract those people like I attracted today and it's, it's not shocking at all because everything works together for good. And I, that's a Bible verse that I focus on. So um, basically for me, my all night sessions um, are a thing of the past, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and I've learned the effects of having no sleep when the Isogenics um, sleep, sleep system came out and it basically scared me to go get eight hours of sleep at night. I threw out the alarm. Um, that's the first thing. Um, of, or the second thing of my daily routine, I threw the alarm out. So now what I do is I have a setting on my phone that starts a very low, very calming song for about 10 minutes before the alarm goes off. And I'm usually awake long before that alarm even sounds. And that's just a, a pleasant way to start my day because it just gradually gets a little louder and kind of brings me into the daytime. Um, this sounds really crazy, but all of the moms out there can relate to this. I brush my teeth, make my bed, and drink a glass of water. Um, there's something about brushing your teeth that just feels fresh and gets you going. Um, I was in Australia last month and we were in a plane or on the runway for 22 hours and I was obsessed that I could not brush my teeth. It felt horrible. Um, making your bed, if you make that bed within the first, you know, takes you what, two minutes to make your bed, you've already had success for the day, right? And when you go back in the, in the night to, to get into that bed, you can look at the success you had first thing in the morning. So um, I love that I'm still right as a mom. So I wake up and I've sub subconsciously already accomplished a couple of things before I get on with my day. Um, silence, meditation, and prayer. What I do personally is I, um, I breathe in God's grace and I breathe out praise. Um, and gratitude. And that's really um, something that set my day great with just being grateful for all that I've been given, for people that have come into my life, um, all sorts of things. I mean, gosh, you start thinking about gratitude and you could literally go all day long. Um, so I have a very hard time with just silence and breathing. I can go about 30 seconds and then I'm thinking about the grocery store and all of that. So I tend to focus on the gratitude and um, just, just praising time. Um, so reading something inspirational, and again, they don't always happen in this order, but they, I try to get all of these in in a day. Um, read something inspirational, so devotion, um, an inspirational book. I have um, Bible plans on my phone and I shut off my notifications so that I can actually read my Bible without seeing Facebook posts coming up on my, my phone. Um, and if I'm reading, I try to read 10 pages or 10 minutes because I can, again, just get totally into it. And then before you know it, it's, you know, an hour later. So a book I'm reading right now, um, this was actually sent to me by my investment guy called, um, it's by the author of The Secret, it's called The Power. And so that's a great easy book to read for 10 minutes or 10 pages and um, get a great start to your day. Um, so if you have any favorite books that you're reading now, I would love for you to post those below because um, I have three people and Hillary's one of them. Every time I talk to Hillary, I will usually end up again with one of those lists, but I'm not consumed by them anymore. But I'll get a list of three or four books that she has heard about or recommended. And so I just keep a running total, kind of like I do with good restaurants that I can go to when I'm ready to pick my next book. So if you've got a book that you love, um, that's really inspired you, that um, you would like to share, please post that down below. Um, affirmations. So um, this is my weak spot. Again, I told you I was gonna be authentic um, and really share my, my daily journal, but, or daily journey, but affirmations. So my son-in-law Zane is king of affirmations. And I thought they were kind of weird, um, but they're so powerful and I've watched it happen. They're living, my uh, daughter and son-in-law are living with us. They've been with us since May until their house is done in September. Every day he writes his affirmations out in the morning and he turns around and he writes those same affirmations in the evening. And they change you know, over time, but he sticks with those same ones. And here's what I will tell you. He's made me a believer because 
this young man has hit all the benchmarks for his company quotas and his own personal goals for the year by June 29th. And that speaks volumes. Um, so I know affirmations work and I'm just going to share that I am, I'm working on that. I'm getting better and better and better, right? Um, because here's the deal. Affirmations, um, we do all day long whether we realize it or not. We're either, they can either be positive or they can be negative. Love saying, yes, I do too. Um, they can either be positive or they can be negative. Uh, you've heard people say, well, I can't do that, or I'm not a very good tennis player, or I'm, I'm not good at this or that. That's a negative affirmation. So if you can turn that around and say, um, you know, I am getting better and better at tennis, or some people will say, well, I'm always late. We'll change that around and say in your daily affirmation, I am arriving at my appointments 10 minutes early, fully prepared, completely confident, and ready to be completely present with the person that I'm meeting. See that, that tone and, and that posture completely changes it. And before you know it, you're thinking that and it's becoming a habit for you. Um, so I love that. I'm working on that. Um, I catch myself much quicker than I used to with, with my affirmations. Um, so that's another one. Visualization. So this one is a good one right now for me. You can visualize two different ways. You can create a vision board or you can just take that time to do visualization in your mind. It's really important when you're doing that, that you attach a feeling to it. So um, for example, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, you're going to cross stage when you hit three star, four star, what's that going to feel like? What might you be wearing? What do you think the music is going to be playing? Who will be there with you? When you attach that feeling to it, it becomes much more real for you. So my visualization is really done with a vision board. Um, and I'm actually getting ready to recreate that tomorrow. That's on my, my list of to do's, but, um, I have to tell you with my vision board. So we recently moved. My vision board was upstairs in my office and my office was quite large so I could be focused on all different places and never really focus on my vision board. In our new house, I don't know if you can see it right behind me, it sits right in front of my chair. So I am dead center on it all day long if I'm in my office. And when we moved in and I set my vision board up in my office, a couple things fell off and one of them was a floor plan. And um, that floor plan I had put on my vision board three years ago when I was just praying to God, please, please help us sell this house. And this is where I want to live. I want a house about this size. And guys, the elevation of the front of the house is different, but the floor plan is exactly the same floor plan. And I focused on that and I just thought, gosh, if I focused on my, my vision, like I focused on wanting to get a smaller house, how powerful would that be? So tomorrow I have a whole new focus with my, with my vision board because it does work. You know, again, focus on how you feel about it, who are you with, do you feel proud? Um, and then also like literally picture yourself, and I did this, I pictured myself living in my new house. And someone told, uh, Dave MacArthur told me to do that and picture the family that's going to buy your house. I mean, all those details really are important with visualization. Um, journaling, you can do, um, I like to journal in a separate notebook with just my journaling in it, not my to-do list, not anything. Um, journaling, and by the way, these are at Joann's, um, leather bound for $3. Um, so I bought a whole bunch of them for my team. Um, but journaling can be about anything. It can be about your successes, your goals, your dreams, your experiences. Again, I like to write, so be, be very careful um, that you don't actually, you know, write till 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, you can put anything in your journal, um, and it's a great way to go back over time and look at your success and, um, you know, just see all the things that you've actually accomplished because sometimes we forget about those things, right? 
Um, so finally, I have two more, move your body. Uh, some people get up, I've seen on some of our morning calls, um, Erica is always exercising, which is so inspirational. Um, but move your body in some way. It doesn't mean that you have to exercise at that very moment, but do something to get yourself moving. So some um, people, they um, maybe drop to the floor and do 10 push-ups. I, I know someone that, that does push-ups. Um, right before they take their pajamas off to get in the shower. Um, but do something. It doesn't have to be your actual workout. That can be later on. Um, but moving is super important because motion creates, or motion creates emotion and that gets you going. Um, so last but not least is one that I really um, have to be very conscious of um, and that is balance. So as I'm doing all these things, you know, I mentioned that you can get really carried away with all of a sudden, you know, reading a book for the next hour and a half. But if you do these consistently, and um, like Chris Berline was talking, and I believe um, Carla also talking about chunking time. So sometimes I'll like set an alarm if I if I am going to read a book, you know, okay, I'm going to read for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Um, but that balance is so, so important because it's very easy to get out of balance. It's easy to get out of balance with not only your daily activities, but um, you can get out of balance with, you know, working 12 hours and not seeing your family. Um, I had that issue before, um, especially when I first got into isogenics, but even when I was practicing law where I would get so focused on something that I would just burn myself out. Um, so scheduling that fun in there is super important and scheduling that time um, you know, the, the chunking of the time to get something done and then the chunking of time to celebrate it or have some fun with it. Um, my boss told me on my very first review when I went to the bank, he said, we don't, um, we don't live to work, we work to live. Meaning, you know, you got to have a break and you take what you get from your job and you go have fun with it. Um, those people that don't take vacations, I don't get it. Um, so schedule fun into your life. Um, and again, this is advice from a, a recovering overachiever. Um, so I, I, I pretty much know all about that. So the time you spend on your morning routine is so important and it's totally up to you. Um, but I typically can complete all the things that I went through in about an hour. Um, so does that mean maybe getting up a little bit earlier? Yeah, I've been getting up 30 minutes earlier. Um, with Bill to just kind of gradually move that perfect hour earlier in the day, which I love because then by the time the rest of the world is up, you've already had two or three hours in, which is great. Um, so as Nike says, just do it, right? Um, so now matters more than ever. ever. They say 95, this, this blows my mind, 95% of society will not create and live the life that they want. That makes me sad. So most people react to what is thrown to them. But what we do consistently is what determines our direction in life. So let's be leaders, share our mindset with each other. And if you have secrets, um, because again, I don't claim to know everything about this and I am still a student and I probably always will be, please post what you do in the morning that really works for you because that will resonate with someone on this group. Um, so as I was preparing my notes today, I was a little bit convicted and I am going to, yes, Hillary, consistency is a key, uh, because doing that little bit every day, even if it's you know two hours of, of phone time, but do it consistently, because I am here to tell you I have done it wrong and um, I know all about that. So if you wanna know how not to do it, just call me. Um, August 5th, I am going to start a group of 10 or 12 people who are like-minded and who want to master the power of creating a consistent morning um, ritual or um, a pattern. So if you want to get in that group with me, that's great. Um, we'll just kind of do it like we're doing our morning calls. Um, I've got a couple of ideas with a book that we can share, but what I really think would be cool, um, we don't have many people on here tonight, but if we could reach out to others and have several small groups going with just that accountability, that um, support of your morning, um, that importance of mindset and you know sharing mindset ideas with people, because that really is, is the key. The mindset and the consistency is what really, really will bless 
not only each of us, but the people that we come in contact with, including our families. It's not just business. Um, so thank you so much for this time tonight. I am pretty passionate about this topic because it's something that I'm working on really hard for myself. And it's something that I'm super excited about now that I don't have all those burdens of big house. Uh, but my hope is that you'll take some of these and take these changes and go forward and um, bless you know, the other people, my kids have been hearing me practice this all afternoon, so I'm sure they are going to be coming up with their own morning routines, um, probably not as early as me, uh, but I'm going to drag Avery into the vision board um, planning meeting tomorrow, which, by the way, if you haven't done vision boards with other people in your family, highly recommend it. Uh, when we were moving, I found Jack. Jack is now 23, but I found his vision board from when he was 14 that we did on vacation in Colorado, and it was so darn cute, um, but it's something to definitely consider doing with your family. So um, anyway, thank you so much for your time, and um, I can open it if you have any recommendations now or if somebody wants to hmm, uh, share their ideas, um, I'm totally open, or we can call it good and go on about our night. Anybody have anything? I have a question, Robin. Let me turn the volume up. Okay, go ahead. Um, when are, are you said August 5th, you're doing the group. Where are you starting at? It sounds like something right up my alley. Um, what I would like you to do is um, Facebook me and okay. Facebook message me. I don't have all the details because I felt convicted at about 5.30. Yeah. Um, but I just think it would be really good. We did um, a Bible study with Hillary and I know Annette was doing one. And it was just, it was such a positive experience that I thought, you know what? Um, and when we were doing those um, push weeks also, we were, we were getting in with people that we didn't know very well. And that was also cool too, because we got ideas from not just our friends. Um, so uh, Facebook me, and if we have 10 or 12, we'll do that. If we have 30 people, or if people just want to start their own, um, you know, we can all share our ideas on that too. But yeah. Just, What's that name? Um, it's under Facebook is Robin Schultz Spooner. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, I look forward to it. Anybody else? All right, guys, we'll have a great evening. I hope that you got a nugget out of this. And um, if you need to call me you, or Facebook me, please do so. I love hearing from all of you guys, and I'll see you in Nashville. Good night. Thank you, Robin. Good night. Thanks, Robin.